The conclusion is so extraordinary that it might be doubted were it not for other evidence. In 1965, this radio telescope in America detected a mysterious signal from space that appeared to radiate from the entire sky. The scientists who discovered it had no idea what it was. They even thought it might be interference from pigeons nesting in the telescope. But other scientists, working on the theory that the universe began with a violent explosion, had already predicted the existence of exactly such a signal. It is, in fact, the last fading glow of the primeval furnace that gave birth to the universe 15 billion years ago. Using the equipment here at Jodrell Bank, we can just about tune into this background cosmic hiss. And when amplified with a little poetic license, we can listen to a whisper from the beginning of time. So according to science, the universe was born about 15 billion years ago, in a moment of cataclysmic creation. This primeval explosion was the Big Bang. And out of the Big Bang came everything that exists, including in one small corner, the planet Earth. This is BBC Television. It used to be thought that the Big Bang marked a barrier beyond which science could never penetrate. Back in 1958, the Big Bang was known as the primeval atom. And here, it was believed, science had finally encountered the unknowable. Now, in the last part of his programme, Professor Lovell will, is going to return to the present state of astronomical science and to the most exciting problem of all. I mean the problem of the origin of the universe. A very interesting stage has now been reached with reference to this problem. I want to talk to you now about the great problem of the origin of the universe. Now, uh, we approach this from the theoretical point of view. And the theorists have to explain the origin of this great system of galaxies and clusters of galaxies. The fundamental concept of the primeval atom theory is that the universe originated from a dense and small conglomerate, which we call the primeval atom. This primeval atom then exploded. This explosion or disintegration was the first event in the history of the universe. Now, if we inquire uh, what happened before then, what the primeval atom was like, how it exploded, uh, then uh, uh, science uh, can give us no further information. And it is at that stage that we pass from the boundaries of physics into metaphysics. The religious were less hesitant to provide their own interpretation of the Big Bang. In 1951, Pope Pius XII stated that here science had revealed the creation as described in Genesis and he adopted the Big Bang as the official teaching of the Catholic Church. Others were less restrained. The Big Bang is the most remarkable event ever discovered by science. It marks not only the creation of all the matter in the universe but also the emergence of space and the beginning of time. How should the Big Bang fit into a religious picture of the world? John Polkinghorne is perhaps uniquely qualified to answer that question. Until 1979, he was professor of mathematical physics at Cambridge University. He is now an ordained priest. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all mankind shall see it. The Lord be with you. And with you. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, because through him thou hast created all things from the beginning and fashioned us men in thine own image. Through him thou didst redeem us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man, to die upon the cross and to rise again for us. Amen. I want to take what science has to say very seriously about the history of the world. And I think it's been one of the great achievements of science in the last 20 or 30 years 
to be able to peer back into the early history of the universe and to see how it could have developed from the, from the Big Bang. Um, there are some imaginative constructions in that story, obviously, but by and large, I think the sweep of it is correct, and I want to take that into account in any picture of the world that I have. As a physicist, John Polkinghorne was closely involved in science's attempt to understand the world from a materialist point of view. How does he reconcile his religious belief with a scientific explanation of the universe, particularly in the case of the Big Bang, the creation itself? I don't think that uh, if science were to um, carry the story yet further back, that that would shake me in any way, because I am not looking for a god who's a god of the gaps, who is popping up where science uh, um, fails to, to find an explanation. If God is related to the world, he must be related to the world at all times and in all places. And um, his role as creator is not just to light the blue touch paper and set the Big Bang off, but he is, I believe, the sustainer of the world. That is, the Christian doctrine of creation has always involved the idea that the world has a, an existence which depends upon the will of God. And I believe, therefore, that God is as much to be seen as creator in maintaining the regularities of the laws of science that we discern today as he is to be discerned in the unusual events of, of, of the Big Bang and its immediate aftermath. So John Polkinghorn believes that the world is kept in existence only by the continuing will of God. His view recalls a famous philosophical puzzle about a tree in an Oxford quad. Does the tree continue to be when there's no one about in the quad? According to some, God is an ever-present observer, sustaining the physical reality of everything in the world. Peter Atkins is an Oxford scientist. He doesn't believe that God is required to keep the tree, or indeed anything else, in existence. I'm a scientific optimist. I believe that there is nothing that science can't deal with. I see no reason to be pessimistic, like some people are, who presume that there is some barrier to, to science beyond which it cannot penetrate, such as beyond the, the Big Bang. There's no reason to suppose that there is a barrier. Every, every problem that science has touched so far, it's rolled back and understanding has come. And I see no reason to suppose that the uh, biggest problem of all, the, the really interesting problem of where we all came from, is going to prove to be the, the first barrier. I see the role of the creator as actually slowly slipping away. And at the moment, he's hanging by his last fingernail to explanation and is about to drop off into oblivion, which is where he belongs. Of course, people will still go on believing that there is something out there, but the only justification they have will be a yearning for it, and that is psychology and not reality. <laughs> friends, we're being told these days that the Bible's account of creation is not reliable, just a myth, some say. Man is a product of evolution, they claim. Is it reasonable to believe that the earth and all things in it were created in six days? Uh, Russell, the Bible does not say the earth was created in six days. The very first verse of the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the next verse says, And the earth was without form and void. Thus, the creation of the earth is described, and no time period is mentioned. Whatever the scientists may conclude as to how much time was required for this work of creation, they would not be out of harmony with the Bible. The word day is used... According to the creationist movement, there's no problem reconciling science and religion. The Hebrew word here used is elsewhere if there seems to be any conflict, then science must have got it wrong. Which is really a wonderful thing to contemplate. And friends, this is just one of the reassurances given to us in the book Science and Creation, which builds in many interesting and faith-strengthening details.